Ben, you're the biggest bookie that I've ever seen uh, in England, and, and by far and away the biggest now uh, in the betting ring. Who, what's what's uh, led you to this success, and, and why is it that you bet so much bigger than the, the rest of them? Um, well, I think that one thing I've learned in, in, in business, in gambling especially, is, is that you must move up in levels. You know, my first bet was a £2 place bet at Hove Greyhound Track, and every single time you try to jump up several levels rather than going one level at a time, that's when you get your bum smacked because you get out of your depth. And I think that it's something that just becomes and you grow and you become, like you have. You know, you learn from mistakes and you just learn how to play a bit bigger. I think that playing big is more about what's here than what's in your pocket. And, and what's um, some advice you've got for uh, the punters? What's some of the biggest mistakes you see them making? Well, look, uh, the obvious mistake there is I think that the difference between a professional punter and, shall we say, an amateur punter is a professional punter knows what he or she is going to be backing that morning. They have their game plan, they have made their prices on the book to 100%. They say, I am going to be back in this horse at anything bigger than 7-1, to one, this football team, at anything bigger than evens or whatever, right? That's what they do. The result of that race has no difference to what they do in the rest of the day. A recreational punter, right, is somebody who essentially is, right, well, that one got beat, so I'm going to completely change tactic and start betting on other stuff, or that one won, I'm not going to have... Um, they just change it as they go along. I think that, that as a bookmaker and a punter, I love level stakes. I'm a level stakes believer. I like to lay big punters as close to level stakes as possible. And when I'm playing as a punter, I like to play to level stakes because I think if I've got a 3 4 5% edge at the end of the year, I can't moan about zigzags yeah. because, I've, because I've played it steady. Do you have any advice um, for, for the average punter? I think know, know the level that you're at. I think that um, people get a, a little knowledge is a very, very dangerous thing. Now, you're at Royal Ascot, this is fun, this is a holiday for you. Yeah. I would have thought that your bets are a quarter of the size that they are at Melbourne yeah. when you know everybody in the track and every trainer and how everything's going to run. Yeah. So I think it's when you're strong, punch strong, when you don't have much knowledge, cover up. Yeah, that's very good advice. And let me ask you a question. So, you're a bookmaker through and through, but really, you can play both sides. As a bookie, and somebody who does such a good card, why do you share that? Because I think, well, hang on, if you make a horse five and you've, you, want, you want to have as much as you can at five, what, 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 why are you um, educating punters? So, first reason is I can't be a bookie for another year because of my non-compete. Right. And the second reason why I give the tips away is because in Australia, the tax have got so high, the bookies... Um, the bookies won't let us on. If I had a bookie like you to bet me to win 100,000, then, then obviously I'd be betting. Yeah. But firstly, um, non-compete, so I yep. can't be a bookie. Yep. And the second reason being is the bookies don't bet the same size that you do because of the taxes that are in place. I'd like, I'd like though, and not for the purposes of this video, out of genuine meaning, I'd like to congratulate you because I believe that in the game, you must always move with the game and not where you want to move, where the game is making you move. Bookmaking ended, so you then moved on to doing the tipping advice or, 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 or whatever it is, and that will then lead to the next opportunity. I think that, you know, you have to bob and weave, you have to take opportunities when they come up. You've done that, and well done.